so I found this lovely spot to paint uh, along the Bow River here. It's in the Fish Creek Park. A uh, lovely scene of this tree back here. Uh, it's got some nice rocks below it and a little bit of water. Uh, just kind of setting up to paint here and hoping that the sun's gonna come out in a few minutes here, give me a little bit of light and shadows. But yeah, here we go. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Forgot to mention that this will be a casein painting today, which is sort of a, like a opaque watercolor similar to gouache. Uh, it'll be my first outdoor painting with casein. Uh, just because it's such a, a packable type of paint, I thought I'd try this over oil today. So yeah, let's see how this goes. So just doing a rough in here for the for the painting, just blocking it in and picking what I want to see in there. I'm interested in the just this composition here of the tree and the rocks and the that little bit of grass in the background there. A little bit of shoreline. Oh, it looks like it's sort of spitting here. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to get this done before I get wet. been a funny year to paint this year because it's either been too hot or or rainy it's just kind of every day I've wanted to get out it just hasn't cooperated very well I've been uh, using this casein in the studio uh, just to kind of get used to it. And I was really looking for for something that would be a little easier for packing along, especially on the, the bicycle. And, and I like to get out on the motorbike too. And so just something that was a little easier to pack that I didn't have to worry about a wet panel or anything like that. And I'd seen a lot of these casein uh, YouTubes and thought, oh, maybe that's the way I should be going. I'm not sure I'd ever be able to give up the oils because I just really, really enjoy the oils. But uh, sometimes it's just, you don't really want to deal with that when you're out here. And the simplicity was definitely appealing. So trying to put in the darks that I see right now. Using some raw umber and sort of a greenish mixture together. 
A little bit of uh, also of uh, burnt sienna. I love the uh, plein air painting because it's so easy to get caught up in detail when you're working in the studio. It's it's too comfortable and you can sit for a long time and, and, and do that. Whereas when you're out here, it sort of, you just want to get it done. I mean, you're still enjoying it, but you know that the light's going to change and, and all that. So it tends to put a little bit of pressure on you to sort of just get the get it down and I like how the paintings look um, they're they're just a lot looser and than what I typically would do in the in the studio and then you hope that that'll sort of rub off into your into your studio painting also I'm using the casein quite wet right now just sort of as, as if I was using oils, I'm kind of doing the block in a lot, a lot wetter. And I gotta say it was nice today not having to bring my towel teen or, or my, my uh, mineral spirits with me. It, it was a nice, nice to not have to worry about that, let alone a, a panel carrier that allows me to really pack up quite light. I don't want to spend too much on these. I'm not looking to detail them really right now, but I did kind of want to get some of that, just the shape of those down. I really like the yellowness of these, these grasses as they're starting to change here at the front. There's a, also a a little bit of a shoreline there that I want to get in. I think I say this is very, very loose right now, almost in a watercolory sort of a way. on this little outcrop here that I'm, I'll detail up a little bit more later. I just want to put some shadows and some feeling of lots of different shapes in there. Kind of mixing a little bit of the violet in with my green there just to get some nice little shadows. Now I do kind of want to get that sky in. Uh, the nice thing about casein is it does tend to dry a little bit, so I can actually come back in later and uh, and actually change the color if I want to. It'll be it'll set up enough that it that's possible. I haven't gone into any white yet. I'm still kind of in that block in. So I'm keeping it kind of, I'm going to put a little bit of white in there to just kind of soften that blue a little bit more. I actually got a little bit of hail on me on the way over here today and I was just really wanting to get out and do this. So I thought, oh, I'm going to just live with this for a few minutes because I could see some clear sky coming in the in behind it so I'm gonna put just a little bit more of a darker feel there in that in the lower area normally it would be a bit lighter towards the the lower horizon but there's some clouds there that I want to emphasize gosh it feels so good to be out here today
some of those darker bottoms of those clouds in. And, uh, could be able to come back with some white because like gouache you can lay it over top. There's almost a bit of a, a greeny blue on this underside there. I've really enjoyed the casein. In some ways, because I was always using casein or uh, gouache quite wet, I've actually find, found that I prefer the casein a little bit more because the, it's a little thicker. And I, w I was using the, gu the gouache quite watercolory, and I, I was missing that richness that, uh, that I was getting with the oils and so I was tending to do more oil painting for my plein airs than, than anything. Now, there's, there's a little bit of, right now that the water is actually quite light. So, especially in on that far side there where that, where the shoreline is. There is also, though, some... You really have to be careful when you're getting the color because it's just so rich, the casein, that it's so easy to make it a little too intense, the color. A little bit of darkness along the shoreline there, too. Just up front here where this little culvert comes in and behind, it's actually looking more browny than, than blue. Ochre brown. And then there's some some grasses that kind of sit in the foreground here. I think we'll we'll kind of hold off with those yet and then add those a little bit later. going a little bit more into the white now that I'm got that first layer in here. That's a little too purple. So add a little green to that just to mellow that down a bit there. into those background trees a bit. Kind of deliberately just moving that brush around a lot so that it gives me some some uh, 
textures in those trees as much as there's some. I don't want to show a lot of detail. I still want to show some some changes of height and. Really using the uh, the scene as reference, and just not uh, focusing too much on getting a perfect rendering here. Let me get some more darks in this shade side of that. The shady side of this tree here. Yeah, it's a little blue. A little burnt sort of sienna in there. Using the brush sort of on an angle here just to create a little bit more texture. And Add a little bit of, oh, the sun's coming out. That's nice. Add a little bit of yellow to that now for the front side. Still the shade in there is what I'm looking at, so I'm not going for those really highlighted leaves just yet. have to remember to spray this once in a while just to keep it moist for me but I'm kind of working with a wet palette today and I've, I've put paper toweling under the sort of it's not really paper toweling it's more like a a cloth a throwaway cloth and I've used that because it's really great for keeping the moisture in there I figured working outside it would probably be a little bit a little bit warmer than when I'm in the studio and so stop it from drying out so much. And where's these? this lighter area just above that A little shoreline in there
just this little bit of shoreline as it kind of goes around the bend and into the distance there. In the water. Kind of a dirty blue here. Mixed up. some rocks on that far shoreline here. Just want to lighten that up a little bit. Sort of a brownie, mauvey kind of color there in the edge of that shoreline. We'll have a little more detail later, but no. Just want to get some of these this edge here of the this little piece of land sticking out and I want that fairly fairly dark here on this side and then we'll go in and add some rock detail a little bit after it's just Trying to keep this as loose as possible. Definitely more on the impressionistic side of things. It's quite dark under that tree. Just a little darker along the shoreline here. Need those darks to see the light, so later when I go in and add some rock detail here, that'll help it pop. Let's go back in now and work on some of that greenery coming off the tree. You don't want to detail in each individual light I just or every leaf I just want to get a impressionistic view of that a little burnt sienna now and some dark greeny blue dirty stuff that I had mixed up before and we'll just sort of get some of that shade in around there and the Sun is kind of coming down from the the right now so we want to make sure we keep these this side darker things are just starting to turn a little bit so you're seeing a little bit of gold in the ed edges of the trees right now kind of really looking forward to getting out here in another week or two and and getting some of the color changes as they come out. Oh, there's a little bit of grassiness in there using a bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of phthalo green here. A little mudded up with a little bit of raw 
number. Sometimes uh, painting and, and filming is a little bit like patting your head and rubbing your tummy. It's uh, hard to talk and paint at the same time sometimes. But. tips that are already starting to lighten a little. Let's see. Add just a smidge of light to that, just to give it a little contrast there against that background. For some little sagey hints around the around this little island, just scrubbing in a little here and there, just to give an impression of some grasses that are within the rocks that we'll detail soon a little bit more. I really like the way I can layer the casein while I'm out here. It dries, uh, especially in the sun, it dries a little bit more. The uh, little wet palette here that I've got going is really working for, for keeping my, my paints uh, fresh and, and workable. A few more golden ends here. a little denser this tree than I've done here but I kind of like that little bit of transparency in there. We'll do some little holes in it as just a little later as we once we get near the end, some little sky holes, I guess you'd call them, even just to show that water behind it. Adding a few more darks again. Just because I feel like went, I went just a little too, too light in some of it, some of these. Some of these leaves and things that are facing me are actually still quite dark in the half shade. So I highly recommend if you're an oil painter to Try out some casein outside if you're if you're wanting to simplify things just a little bit. It's definitely definitely something I'm enjoying out here today. Like I say, I'd never be able to give up my oils just because I absolutely love the medium, but sometimes it's just not as practical as, as something like this. into that bit of bark up the center there. Well, let's put a little bit of rock in there under that tree. Kind of making sort of a violety, soft violety color now to try to enhance some of these. Uh, I don't want them all to be the same color, but 
We'll mix them up with a few that are a little bit more on the warmer side, and that'll give it a little bit of interest. I'm not going to paint each individual rock directly, but but just hint at some different uh, colors under there. There's sort of this pinky, so a little bit of burnt sienna in there with some violet seems to make a nice kind of a warm color for some of them. And again, keeping it very impressionistic here. I don't want to over detail it. Let's go in with a few highlights on those. So I'm just adding some white now to that warmer mixture and we'll hint at some sunlight hitting those. Tiny bit of yellow ochre now I just put in there. There's some fairly large rocks there in the front. That was a little too pink looking, that was. Trying to remember here where the putting the shade on the left side of the, some of, of some of these impressionistic rocks, just to keep in mind where that sun is coming from. Interestingly enough, I had a figure come into this picture right now. Uh, I don't think I'm going to paint him in there. I, I've kind of shortened my distance in the shoreline here, so I, I don't think I quite have enough space for you, You're going to get yourself painted in my picture. <laughs> Emphasize some of that little bit of dark uh, in the water across the way there. So I want to kind of restate some of that little bit of dirty water there at the front of the island. It's definitely in that yellow ochre kind of kind of color. Just kind of kind of mix that right in with that dirty color that I had down there earlier. <laughs> well, I do want to see a little bit of foreground here. And again, there's some bit of the burnt sienna -y kind of a bit of greenery here that comes from this shoreline. Let's just block that in so.
just want to get the darks in first just to make some of those lighter grasses pop when we put them in there. Trying to decide there where that shoreline's going to come in on this side, but I think that's about right. Add a little bit more of that. Light's kind of hitting that, so I'm kind of adding some white to that yellow ochre and burnt sienna and just sort of putting a little hint of it there as the sun catches it as it goes out the front there. Well, I want to highlight some of those rocks at the front just a bit more. Sun's coming out just beautifully now. It feels just great. Just kind of mucking up that white a little so it's not too intense here. Again, I don't want them to all be the same color, so I'm making a little bit of a warmer light here to add to some of these rocks. Let's get some of that foreground in here. It's kind of really kind of a rusty color in some of these little foreground bits. And I'm not going to over fuss with them, even though they're close. I don't want to spend I can do quite a bit of um dry brush techniques with this casein just like you can with gouaches. I just want to catch some of these that are sticking a little further higher up here. And we have onto the other side here they're kind of very sort of ready rusty colored and love these colors that are coming in for the fall here. It's just going to get prettier and prettier here as the, as the days start to shorten and the summer sun gets a little cooler. Very, again, very impressionistic here. I don't want the eye to go too much to this. It's it's a nice foreground, but it's not my not the part of the picture that I want your eye to really stop at. Getting some real dirty, dirty green and raw umber here just to kind of show some stems and there's a little bit of a pale green in there also as the light's hitting here, so we'll just throw in a little of that. 
sun is just beautiful right now. A little cad yellow and some green just to show how that light is catching some of those up the front there. Scrubbing that in there. You don't want to see too many lines of grass there. And I think some of those rocks are going to be a drier now, so I can go back in and a little more highlights in there. A few smaller rocks there in the on the edge. creamy color here I've made up just to show where that light is hitting those rocks right now. Just some dapple light under here you're seeing as the light goes through the trees there. Seeing a little bit of lightness on that through the leaves there. So I'll just show that up a little bit. There's also some grasses that are sort of in that nice sandy color, sort of showing up against the background there. I like that. Just kind of. Also some nice uh, kind of odi colored grasses here at the front too. So we'll, we'll put some of that in there. Mm, that's not gonna show up too much unless I darken that uh, background a little. Maybe we'll kind of wait for that to dry all the way before we just a little too orangey there. It's a little raw umber in there. Just want to put some darker bits in that water. Mainly so I can see my little grasses when they come up there, but and it is a very mucky, yellowy, orangey sort of a bit of water here. So. And that'll kind of help those grasses. You always got to remember you need dark to see light so it tells you very quickly if you've gone dark enough if you can't see those those lights standing out on top of it a little bit of dirt and muck around some of these rocks at the front there. Oh, 
Now I want to add a few more lighter highlights on, on those leaves. I think I'm going to go quite yellow with them because that sun is just really radiating off of those. Again, let's put a few darks in there just so I can see those a little bit better. Just making up a dirty green here with some, some of the muck in my palette. Stopping myself from trying to over detail some of that, but I just want a little more, a little more contrast. Use some of that dirty green down here to it's close up so you can go a little darker here. Just some rough little scratches of grass. Go in different directions here. I have to say, using the casein out here is very, very similar to using uh, oil. I've really enjoyed this today. It's it's definitely a, a medium I'll be using again for outdoor plenaring. It's lovely. Well, there's this little grove of trees right here that are kind of more forward than the ones behind. And I'm going to see if I can't get those to show up a little more here. Just on the shadow sides of them. They're just evergreens, but from this distance, there's not a lot of detail, so. Again, just a nice dirty green here, and. Now, I'm going to grab a clean brush for this because I want to add some really bright, uh, bright white in some of those clouds that are up there. So let's just go straight into the white there. Maybe with a tiny, tiny little bit of yellow. Nice thing about um, casein also is you can mix it up quite thick. That really adds to that impasto y feel that you, can, you want sometimes with the clouds. There we go. Just to hint at that puffiness on the tops there. A few along the lower clouds there. There's some. Just on the edge of that tree line there. I haven't been out for a couple, I haven't done really anything for art for a couple of weeks here. 
think I was just needing a little breather. It's not just the painting, but the the editing that uh, that is quite a time intensive, and I really wanted to just enjoy the last bits of summer, and I like to get out on the bike and stuff. So it was kind of just a little breather, doing some other things, and just really enjoying the the last little bit of summer here. Now let's add some lights to that edge of the shoreline there. I'm seeing quite a quite a bright little spot of light right now. Coming into this area. Let's add some of those bright golden yellow grasses now. I'm just using a very fine brush to get those in. And they're showing up a little better now that we've darkened that water behind it. Actually, I, before I do that, I want to just use some of that ochre color also to get some reflections that are showing up there along the front of that shoreline and some lights just with some just with some horizontal brush strokes here just to give it that sense of water might have to go back over some of those grasses i might have put them in a little prematurely there but just to hint at some some highlighted area there Some reflections from those rocks. <laughs> you do. If I go quiet, it's just because I'm focusing here a little bit on some of the detail. Again, let's go back and put some of those grasses. I got a little distracted there. I realized I had to deal with some of the background stuff. And there's these little seed pods on the top, so we'll just hint at that. Again, putting some warmer tones. It's a nice mixture of warms and cools there in the rocks, the different slaty ones, and then the more bouldery riverbed rock in there too. A little bit of variety.
and I've left these the edges of these trees pretty loose here. I just want to go in and just kind of hint at some finer uh, kind of diluting it so it's not too dark here. Just want to hint at a little bit of different color or different different shapes here along the edge of that tree line. This is where I have to be careful because I can actually ruin that nice loose look. I think I want to go in and just add a little bit of lighter sagey green into some of those back here. And there's sort of a a hint at some some uh, tree stems over here too. Not doing anything too exact here, but give a slight hint of that sun coming through those trees at the front. I also see some very distinct darker trunks in there. Let's just give these paints a little spraying of water. More in the palette where I'm mixing, the ones on the little spongy cloth there seem to be hanging in there pretty good as far as moisture. I was a little concerned that they were going to dry too quickly on me out here, but I'm finding that really only the, the paints that are in my uh, that I'm mixing and they're very thin compared to the the little daubs of paint in the on my towel there so they're they dry up a little bit but just a little bit of misting on them just like wash it seems to be enough to to really wet them up again so so just giving some hints at some darks dark trunks over there on that side. Now these uh, foreground grasses are a little bit lighter here. So we're going to go in and not quite that light. I think I'm, I should probably let go of that little fine detail brush right now because it's too easy to get too caught up in that. I'm going to use something I think just a little bit fuller. Here's a little diagonal brush that's very soft on the ends and that should work really well for, I just want to mix up a nice little Nice little ochery touch, touch bit of green in there. There's these tops here. Let's uh, even in the background there, just along that dark line. There's this, this bit of light grasses there. It's like a line that runs right in front of that tree line. And then just between this little, little shoreline in the distance there, there's some more of that lighter color. high there. I want to bring that shoreline back in a bit. Now I am actually going to grab that little detail brush one more time because there's some hints of uh, rock there. I'm going to add a little bit of violet that I, dirty violet that I have on my it there and just kind of go in and just kind of 
hint at some of that in that little bit of a little bit of a beach line there, like a rocky beach line. those in again, that little bit of yellow grass right at the front. And then just a little bit more coloring behind there. Yeah, I like that better. Quite dark that water line over there. A few ripples in that water. Kind of a mixture of violet and blue there, I'm seeing. So, so a little movement in that water. Establish that shoreline there. And I just want to put a few, not so much sky holes, but water hole lines in here. to give that tree a little bit of transparency there in the bottom. Kind of nearing the finish with this. I see a little bit of a dark reflection down here from that area above to so just about ready to call it here it's going to add a little bit of a greeny uh, browny sort of a base on some of these bits of grass down here just to ground it a little bit more. Not being specific about direction here, kind of deliberately going a little loose with it. on those edges just a little bit brighter just really want to show how that sun is catching some of these leaves on the on the sun side Just kind of bring, brings the edges of these 
branch is alive a bit there. There's a few that are being caught just at the left side there as the sun pokes over that way a bit. Here, that's a little better. I feel like that's a little more what I'm seeing here for brightness. It's all about light. That's what we are as painters of light. Sometimes if you're not careful, you can end up going just back and forth with the darks and lights here if you overdo it. So I think I'm gonna stop at that. I'm still feeling like I want some, some warm lights on those rocks. They're just, just a little more brightness in those. Where that light's coming in there. Just like casein, I feel like sometimes if you lighten them too soon after, if it's not dry, they can kind of absorb the, the white a bit, so. That's a little better, I think. A little brighter there. A little hints of that warm grass on the other side. Well, let's call it with this. Actually, just a tiny bit of, I just wanna see a little bit of a sky hole there on the left side.
little bit more in here. And that, that's that. I think I'm pretty much ready to call this painting now. So I said about five minutes ago, but... So this is the finished painting. Uh, worked out really well today using the casein. Uh, this is my palette that I've used. I used the wet uh, spongy cloth there and then just use the rest of it for mixing. This one actually folds up nicely so it's great because I can actually transport that paint back home without getting it onto everything. And this is, uh, actually I don't know if I've shown everybody this before, but this is my Yugo easel and it's just on a tripod here. It's a great little setup. It's, it's really just a little 6x8, which I feel does the job just perfectly for my little, little uh, paintings here uh, for bicycling and uh, on the motorbike. Uh, this is a scene today that I was looking at, kind of cropped in there. The clouds have moved along now and it's just a beautiful day here. Uh, yeah, it's just lovely right along the river here. Very comfortable place to be. Uh, i got to head back home now on the bicycle. It's all going to get packed up and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining me.